Hey, Kevin here, Skylabs, bringing you another video. Definitely gonna be a fun one. Today we're gonna go over some speakers that you might walk by if you were to look on Facebook Marketplace or be out thrifting or at a garage sale, that type of thing. Because either the brand name on the badge turns you off or they're just really unsuspecting, kind of ugly looking, boring speakers. I think you'd be passing up potentially on a good find if you did. To me, the speakers on this list fall in that Wolfson sheep clothing category. So let's get into the list. And our first set of speakers on this list are the Optimus Pro LX5s. Uh, these were made by Tandy. And also you'd see these badged by RCA and Realistic, I believe. These speakers came out in the mid 90s. It is a two-way ported design. They are eight ohms and a little bit on the inefficient side at 83 dB efficient. Currently there are 15 pairs on eBay, so quite a few of them, and they seem to be averaging around $100. I think when most people see the LX5 for the first time, uh, they kind of assume like I did that those are just really cheap entry level speakers that maybe came with a mini system from the 90s, that type of thing. And you would be wrong and I was wrong when I first saw them. Uh, a guy brought a pair of these into the shop maybe three or four years ago for the first time and said, have you ever seen these? And, and I saw the Optimus badge and said, nope. And I think I was thinking in my head, yeah, I'm not interested in those at all. And then he pulled off the top and all of a sudden my eyes got big because I was like, well, what the hell's going on here? You know, this is not your normal speaker and it's not. And I know I'm gonna totally butcher this name, but I think it's Linnaeum. I've never heard it pronounced before. Essentially what this is is a dipole tweeter. These are actually made out in Oregon in the United States and then sold to Tandy in order to put them in these various models. And because there are several variations out there from RCA to Optimus and whatnot, um, I've heard people say that they've had plastic cabinets and metal cabinets. I believe mine are plastic. I've got the RCA version currently, but I've had the Optimus version as well. Both sounded great to me. I didn't have them at the same time to AB them per se, but um, these are really unique sounding in that they're really kind of atmospheric. That dipole tweeter really kind of dispenses the highs around the speaker. And in the right application, this could be a really cool solution to maybe two rooms that, um, that you're trying to spread your music out evenly. I've always had them set up in a traditional way, usually on the speaker wall. And they don't take long to sell because they're definitely a curiosity and they sound really good. And there are a couple negatives with the LX5. Um, they do need refoamed, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you can do refoams, it's a good thing because you can pick them up cheap. The other thing would be that you need a little bit of power to really push these. I think, you know, you probably want at least over 40 watts per channel, being that they're only 83 dB efficient. However, I've had them hooked up to quite a few receivers. And if you're just wanting moderate listening levels, I don't think you need to go crazy and go out and buy some crazy big amplifier. But just to get that noise floor down, the more power you have, the better off you're gonna be. Really cool speaker, really interesting, unique speaker. I know they made more speakers in this line. However, these are the only ones I've ever had. I've only had the LX5 uh, either by RCA or Optimus, even though I know they made tower speakers and other ones. These seem to be the most common. I would just keep your eye out for these. Uh, they're not that uncommon. You might find them at a thrift store or garage sale. And what you would suspect to be is kind of a a boring cheap speaker, I think with just doing a refoam on, you might be really happy with them. So if you come across them, grab them. And the next speaker on our list is the Mission MS50. These were manufactured in the early 2000s. They are a two-way ported design at six ohms. They are 88 dB efficient. And currently there are 16 pairs on eBay. And there's a couple interesting things with the speaker. One, I love the speaker. Um, 
I, I had a pair come in uh, four or five years ago, something. And I remember putting them on the stereo wall and instantly being like, you know, there's something really special here, you know, for this small of a footprint, this is really producing a lot of really good sound and a being them with several other speakers, they just kind of blew everything else out of the water. They sold pretty quick. And so I had another opportunity to buy a pair and I did, and I've kind of just hung on to them. They're small. Um, I break them out every once in a while when I want to just compare some things. A couple interesting things about these speakers, uh, they were sold with a mini system by Denon. It was a Denon DM50S Executive. And another interesting thing about the MS50s, if you are planning on picking up a pair, there are two different regions that these were made. There's the made in England ones, and then there's the made in Malaysia MS50s. And the made in England ones tend to get more money for them. I have never owned a Malaysian pair. I've only had two pairs of made in England's. And a lot of people online say that the made in England ones sound better. Um, therefore, they get more money for them. These are still relatively inexpensive speakers, even on eBay. You'll see the Malaysian ones range anywhere between 80 to to $100 plus shipping. And then the, the ones that are made in England can get up to about the 140 range. There are quite a few of them on eBay right now. And so they're not out of reach for a lot of people out there that are wanting to try a vintage mini speaker. Um, these are really well constructed. They do sound really good. They've got quite a bit of bass for them for their footprint. When we did have them here in the store, I played them for a lot of customers and everybody agreed. They sound really good. If you are in the market for a mini speaker system and don't want to buy anything new, definitely check out the MS50. On another note, because some eBay sellers don't realize there were two regions in which these were made, a lot of times you'll see the made in England version being sold at the made in Malaysia price. So it's worth it to go through the eBay listings and zoom in on the back of that speaker as it'll say right on it, either made in Malaysia or made in England. And I don't know how much water that really holds because I haven't heard the Malaysian version and they might be just as good as the made in England version. But it does seem like that's most people's opinion online. So just take that for what it's worth. And that's the Mission MS50. Definitely one of my favorite, if not my favorite, mini bookshelf speaker that maybe has ever come out. And the next one on our list is the Realistic Minimus 7. I can't imagine there were a lot of people out there that didn't see that one coming. There is a huge cult following out there for the Minimus 7s and all their variations. And the Minimus 7 is another speaker made by the Tandy Corporation. The Minimus 7 is a two-way design at 8 ohms. They came in several different finishes, depending on which manufacturer badged them, including walnut, black, silver, and white. And there may be others that I'm not aware of. There are currently, and usually, a lot of Minimus 7s on eBay, and they usually range between $80 to $150, uh, depending on the different finish you might have and condition, that type of thing. And the Minimus 7, which came out in 1979, had a very long production run. There's quite a bit of variance in pricing over those years. It looks like in 1981, they were $49 each. The 1997 version by Optimus was $79 each. And then in 2002, RCA's version was $59 each. I'm sure there are different driver manufacturers throughout that span, but for the most part, it really remained the same speaker. And I think that's why they've kind of got this massive cult following in that for the size of the speaker, being a lot of them did have metal casing. They were a very robust, almost indoor, outdoor type of speaker that sounded really good. You know, I'm not going to tell you that these things produce really great bass. They don't. The bass is almost kind of non-existent. There's been several times where I have bought five packs of these from thrift stores or garage sales because they were being used as kind of a, 
a Bose surround sound type cube system where you would pick up five of these and then add a subwoofer to it and you've kind of got a poor man's Bose Cinemate or whatever those were called. So you do see this quite often where you'll see five of them all taped together at the thrift store and they want 25 bucks for all five. And in that case, you grab them for sure, even knowing there's a potential for maybe a blown tweeter or a blown woofer. Hopefully it's just one of them and you end up with two sets of really good Minimus 7s. This has happened to me before a couple times. So it's definitely a possibility for you as well. I don't think this was the first micro speaker out there, but I really do think the popularity of the speaker and the long run of it definitely inspired other speaker manufacturers from maybe even Klipsch to Bose, uh, even uh, NHT or now here this. You can see where this space really kind of grew more legs as subwoofers became more popular in order to fill out the sound of the bass. Uh, if you were living in a tiny home or something like that, this would be a great speaker option for you in that you're getting really good mid-range and treble from two simple, small, almost fit in the palm of your hand speakers that coupled with a, a nice subwoofer, you've got a pretty good full range stereo system. If you're out thrifting or out garage selling and you're just walking by and you see a, what looks like a cheap little speaker sitting over there, Go over and grab it, pick it up. If it's got some weight to it and it says Minimus on it or Minimus 7 by Realistic, RCA, or Optimus, definitely do yourself a favor, grab them, and you might just have found a nice little speaker that you could put in a second room or whatnot. So I agree with the cult-like following for these. We use these quite often on our bench. Uh, it makes for a really nice bench speaker because they're so small. And when you've got a large receiver on your bench and you don't have room for a set of JBL L100s on most text benches. So, so the Minimus 7 turns out to be a really good, robust speaker for bench testing amplifiers. I think Rob's got a pair on his bench right now. We go through bench speakers a lot. We've had this question before. People say, well, what, what do you use for bench speakers? And I'll say... Um, anything beat up and ugly that sounds good that will last three or four months because no matter how many safety precautions you take, putting additional inline fuses and whatnot, you're working on high powered amplifiers, you're gonna blow those speakers up. So we just constantly have a constant rotation. Usually we try and keep the ones that are not good enough for the floor, but also sound good enough to be confident that were able to hear any problems with the receiver. And the Minimus 7 checks all those boxes for sure. I've honestly got three more sets of speakers here to talk about, and I just don't think we're gonna be able to do it and get it in a 15 minute video or so. So uh, we'll have to make this a series. Hopefully um, this is good information for you. I really honestly believe in every one of these speakers I'm talking about today and that they all sound really good. Just keep them on your radar. And the next set of speakers is definitely on the newer side, and it's JBL, which you might be thinking, well, everybody knows JBL. And the reason the JBL HLS 610s and 810s are on this list really is because they kind of look like cheap big box speakers you would have picked up in the early 2000s. And it's not that JBL wasn't making good speakers at this time, but they were also making some pretty inexpensive um, entry-level price point speakers as well. If I saw these again at a garage sale or a thrift shop, I would instantly say, okay, you know, it's just another uh, early 2000s big box speaker. And this is definitely true because when they are sitting up on a shelf and you've got the grill cloths on, you just kind of assume the worst. Uh, it's when you take the grill cloths off that you realize, okay, this is a completely different ball game. There's something going on here. I really want to hear those. Couple that with the JBL badge and things start adding up to where you go, all right, let's sit down and give these a listen. And the JBL HLS series was introduced in 1998. There are more speakers in this series. I have just never heard anything but the 810s and 610s. They actually made a smaller speaker, the 410, 
I'm sure they sound great. I just haven't heard them. So we're sticking with the 810s and 610s. And the 810s and 610s are 90 dB efficient. They are rear ported. They have a soft dome, horn loaded tweeter. There are currently eight pairs on eBay. They seem to range anywhere between $60 and $140, give or take the condition and shipping. And for JBL, I definitely think the sound with these is definitely more on the exaggerated side is how I would like to say it. I think these would definitely lean towards people that are listening to rock or heavy music, big bass, kind of excited highs. They are not a flat response monitor type of speaker, um, but they're not boring either. I mean, these are fun to listen to. They have a little bit of color to them, but that color is good. It makes these speakers fun to listen to. I don't think it's the type of thing you're gonna sit back and sip some wine and you know, discuss the finer points of the cello coming through the speakers type of thing. But if you're looking for a inexpensive speaker uh, with that JBL sound, I think these are really cool speakers. They're really underpriced and they sound really, really good. I think these are sleeper speakers when you talk about the JBL line. If you're a fan of JBL, you're a fan of a, a speaker that has character to it. I think for the price, it's worth giving them a shot. I don't think you're gonna have trouble getting your money back if it's not a good fit for you. They make a really good garage speaker. At the size they are, they really produce a lot of really good sound. And the next set of speakers I wanted to talk to you all about is the AS100 and the AS300 by Sansui. And the Sansui AS100s were manufactured in 1965. This is a two-way acoustic suspension speaker at eight ohms and 86 dB efficient. And at the time of recording this video, there were two pairs of AS100s and two pairs of AS300s on eBay, ranging between $350 to $800. And that's the most I've seen at one point looking on eBay. Um, I've looked for AS100s and 300s periodically over the years, and rarely do you see more than two at a time. So it is kind of surprising to see that many currently. This is a speaker that I've wanted to listen to for a long time as I am a fan of Sansui. However, I am not a fan of their speakers. You'll hear on the online community the term Kabuki speaker. And really what this references, I'll put the online definition down here below. There was a trend that happened in the 70s where Pioneer, Kenwood, and Sansui we're putting a lot of extra drivers into a speaker cabinet. You know, you'd have three tweeters and two mid-range and a woofer. These have kind of become known as Kabuki speakers. And really the majority of the Sansui speakers from the 70s are just that. And they don't really sound all that great to me. I'm not a fan. And I know most people aren't either because every time we have a set of sp 1500s or sp 2000s or what have you as soon as people start a b in them with other speakers they really get overlooked we usually have to sell sansui speakers of that era at kind of a discount because they don't audition well if you're going to sell them out of your home and a person only has the sansui speakers to choose from you're probably going to move them a lot quicker than i would they do have a really nice look to them uh, with the lattice grills and whatnot. The reason the AS100s and 300s are on this list is because once again, if I didn't know about the AS100s and 300s and I was out thrifting or garage selling and I saw a pair of these and I saw the Sansui badge, I would probably just keep on walking. And again, that would be a huge mistake as these are very, very good sounding speakers. I think most people would put these in line with the ARs, the KLHs um, from this era, from the late 60s. I've never AB'd them with a pair of AR4Xs, but I imagine they probably go toe to toe. The only difference is the AS100s by Sansui are quite a bit more rare. I've always looked at these online. I've always wanted a pair. And I think last year a pair came in 
they're in really bad shape and I don't care. I'm not going to clean up the cabinets. I'm not going to refinish them. I'm going to leave them as is. That's the way I bought them. And they're kind of my beat up Sansui um, AS 100s, but they sound incredible. And I think this might be Sansui's best sounding speaker they ever made. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that and, that, and that's fine. I haven't heard every Sansui speaker, but I've heard quite a few of them and nothing has ever really blown me away the way that the AS100 does. And again, I wanna thank you all for watching another video from Skylabs. Hopefully you got some good information out of this. Hopefully this gets you a couple speakers to maybe keep on your radar if you are a person that likes to go out thrifting or hit garage sales. It's a really good and fun way to find some of this vintage equipment and pick it up really cheap. You know, you can always pick up records and there's always good conversations that seem to be happening at garage sales and stuff like that. If you are going to hit the garage sales, always, always, always ask if they have vinyl records or other stereo equipment. You have no idea how many times I've been to a garage sale and just from asking, hey, you don't happen to have any vintage stereo equipment or speakers or vinyl records. It happens all the time. You'll hear, oh, yeah, we just didn't think anybody would want that. And you could end up taking home a really nice piece of gear. Um, it's not going to happen every time, but it doesn't hurt to ask. So you might as well. And keep your eyes peeled for any of these speakers on there. We'll do a follow-up video and add some more to this series down the road. If you picked up a great set of speakers that maybe a lot of people were walking by at a thrift store or garage sale, put it in the comments. Um, love hearing those stories. And if you have any suggestions of speakers that you think are maybe on the ugly side or their badge might be a turnoff to people, but you think sound really good, leave those in the comments too. Thank you again. Really appreciate it. If you'd like to pick up some shirts, hats, vinyl records, any of that type of stuff, really help support the channel. Head over to skylabsaudio.com forward slash shop and have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you all. Really appreciate it.